We've completed the M of our MVVM application, the models. Now we're going to move on to the V of MVVM, the views. So I'm skipping over the view models for now because I want to have the models done and the views done and then show how the view models combine those together. So we are going to be focusing on the views here and the views that we create are going to support the use cases that I showed off last time, such as the simple use case diagram we have here. Our user is going to be able to make a reservation and view their reservations in our Reservoom application. So that being said, we're going to have a view to make a reservation and a view to view reservations. In our project, let's create a new folder for views. And our first view is going to be a user control. So that's how we define views in WPF MVVM applications. And this is going to be a make reservation view. And then the other view we're going to have is another user control. And this is going to be the reservation listing view. So this view is going to display all the users reservations. Let's create that. And now we don't have any navigation set up in our application. So for now, we're just going to display one of these at a time on our main window as we develop the application. So the first view we're going to work on is the make reservation view. So we will define that here in our main window. And we're going to have to import our views namespace. So we can do a control dot import the namespace and we'll just leave this for now. So our make reservation view will be displayed on the main window. And just to test this for now, we'll just throw a text block in our view and just throw a little hello world on our make reservation view. So let's see this and we should see this text block. And there we go off to a good start. So now we just need to actually build the UI. So before we start cowboy coding this user interface, I did prepare a wireframe and I don't do my wireframes in Visio. That would be a little bit difficult. I actually use Figma, which is a great free to use tool. So we got this simple, very simple wireframe. So to make a reservation, the user will enter their name, enter the floor number and room number for the room that they want to reserve, and then enter the start date and end date for their reservation. And then they can submit that reservation to actually create it or cancel and go back to the view reservation page. So to begin this grid, we're going to have some row definitions in here. We're going to have a row for our title, the make reservation title. It's going to just be auto height. We're going to have another row for the name field, another row for the floor number and room number fields, another row for the start date and end date, and another row for the submit and cancel buttons. So for the make reservation title, that'll go in row one. We just use our existing text block and make that say make reservation. I'll make the font size bigger. We'll go with 24 and this is grid row zero. So these rows are zero indexed. Can't forget that. Now for the name field, this is going to go in its own grid and this is going to be grid row one. So the second row and we're going to have two rows in here as well. One for the name label and another row for the name text box. So these can both be auto again. And in the first row, we want a text block for the name label that'll go in grid row zero. I know zero is the default, but I like to define all my grid rows. And then underneath the text block, we're going to have a text box. So that'll be grid row one. And the text that we enter into this text box is going to have to bind to a property on our view model, which we'll eventually create. So for now, I'm just going to leave it blank and we'll get into this when we get into creating view models. And then maybe we should put some margin on the top of our text box. So that's not up against this text block too much. So we'll do five at the top. The way margin works is it goes left, top, right, and then bottom. So we're doing five to the top. Might be too much. We'll play with it later. Now we're also going to have another row underneath our name. So I'm just going to copy all of this and paste it into row two. And this is going to be for the floor number and room number fields. So we do have two fields in here and those are side by side. So we are going to have some column definitions in here as well. So these can just be auto width. So our first field will go in grid column zero. That's for the text block and for the text box. And this is for the floor number. Again, we want some top margin on this text box. And then we're going to have another field in the second column. So we're just going to copy this. And this is going to be for the room number. So this is going to go in column one, which is going to be our second column, actually. And then I'm going to want some margin to the left of this second field. So we can add that to both of our text blocks, just margin to the left. So that's this first value. We'll just do five for both of these. And then honestly, my start date and end date row is pretty similar. So I'm just going to copy this entire row and paste that down here, except this is row three now. And instead of text box for the entry, we're going to have a date picker. And I believe eventually we're going to have to set up a binding to selected date. So this is the value that's going to get sent up to the view model. We'll get that set up later. And we want that for the end date as well. This is grid column one and our fields are start date and end date. 
So lastly, we have our submit and cancel buttons. And so far, we've just been using grids as our panels and we've been defining rows and columns inside the grid. But I feel like for the buttons, we can just go ahead and simplify this with just a stack panel and set the orientation to horizontal. So everything we put inside the stack panel will just get placed side by side. And this is grid row four, I believe. So we're gonna have a button to submit the reservation. And since we are in a stack panel, we don't have to define grid rows or grid columns. It's just gonna put them side by side. And then we're gonna have another button to cancel. We'll throw some margin on here. So five to the left sounds good to me. And these will also eventually bind to commands on our view model. And I'm just now realizing we haven't added margin to any of our actual grids. So all of our rows are going to be really close to each other. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So the spacing between the make reservation title and the name field, going to want some top margin on that. Probably a lot, maybe like 50. That might be a lot. We'll play with it when we get into live debugging. So we are going to eventually start this and debug. We could do that now. In fact, let's do it. Let's see how bad it looks. So, all right. So 50 is definitely way too much. Let's stick to 25. And then for all of the other fields, we'll do maybe just about 10. So apply that for all of these rows. And then for the buttons, I think we'll go back up to 25. So get some good spacing in there. I think that's better. I also need margin on this date picker right here. So we'll do five to the left on that. Get a little bit of space right there. We might even want more. Let's do 10 to the left for all of these. So same goes for our buttons down here. Spread things out a little bit more. And then for the room numbers as well. And the floor number. Increase that to 10. I think that'll look good to step in the right direction. I also want my floor number field and my start date field to be the same width. And same for the room number field and the end date field. So to do that, we can use something called shared size scoping. So on our root level grid, we can set grid shared size scope to true. And then for the floor number column, the room number column, and then the start date column and end date column, we can set something called a shared size group. And we can give this a name. So we'll call this the, I guess just first column and then second column for the other one. So copy this down, change that to second column. And then let's just copy both of these shared size groups and apply those to our columns on the start date and end date grid. So paste those in. And now, as you can see, everything lines up because this column, so this is the column for the start date, has the same shared size group name as our column for the floor number. So these are gonna have the same width no matter what. So even if this start date column got gigantic, so let's make the width like a thousand for this start date date. All right, maybe that was too much. So let's try 500. So as we can see, the floor number also grows to match that width as well. So shared size group, a great tool to make sure all your columns are in line. If you want them to be lined up, we do in this case. And then the last glaring issue is that our content is pressed all the way up against the side of the screen and also the top as well. So what we can do is add some margin to this make reservation view, except I actually think I want this to be applied to all of our pages. So I'm gonna put the margin right on the main window grid. So we'll define a margin, we'll do 20 left and right, and then 10 on the top and bottom. And there we go, that looks better already. And then our content doesn't really need to take up the entire size of the screen. Like what if we went full screen it would take up everything. So what we can do is set a max width. So we don't have much content on our screen and we're also not gonna have much for the reservation listing view. So we're just gonna set the max width to about 600. There we go. And then it gets centered and then our content doesn't grow to astronomical widths. Let's also put some padding on these buttons. That's kind of nasty. So let's go into the make reservation view and apply some padding here, except I actually want this padding to be applied by default to all of our buttons. So what I'm gonna do is head into the app.xaml and we have these application resources. So we can open this up and define a default style for our button. So we'll set that as the target type. And since we don't give this style a key, that means the style is automatically gonna be applied to all of our buttons. So we want all of our buttons to have some padding. So we'll have a setter for the padding property. And I think I want 10 left and right and maybe five top and bottom that might be too much too little let's see that that looks pretty good actually pretty satisfied with that i feel like these text boxes could also use some padding so we can define a default style for that let's copy this existing style but this is for the text box and this is going to take much less padding we can just do 
two. Whoops, and this should be text box, not text block. And there we go, that looks better, just enough. And the last change I wanna make is I think I want my default font size to be 14, so just a little bit bigger, and that looks better. So that should be everything for the make reservation view. Let's switch over to the reservation listing view. So we're gonna set that as our view in the main window, change this to reservation listing view. And the reason we're just hard coding it here is because we haven't set up navigation infrastructure yet. So I also went ahead and created a wireframe for the view reservations page. And originally based on our use case diagram and based on the methods that we've created, I was expecting for the view reservation page to display reservations for a user. Hence why we have this get reservations for user. But I think what I actually want is this to just display all reservations. So we're just gonna make this get all reservations and get rid of the username parameter and get rid of the where filter, update my documentation and then do the same thing for our hotel, this is now gonna be get all reservations and no more parameter. And the reason I decided to do this is because we don't really have any kind of authentication set up where we can determine what the current user of the application is. So it'll be simpler this way and we can focus on building the MVVM application. So anyways, back to our UI, I have this wireframe for the view reservations. And from this page, we're also gonna be able to make a reservation. But anyways, the main content of the page is just gonna be a list of all the reservations. So let's go ahead and create this on our reservation listing view. We're gonna have a row for our header, which is also gonna contain the make reservation button. And then after that, all we're gonna have is one more row for our reservation list view. So our header, this is gonna be a grid in row zero, which is the default. And it's gonna have two columns because we're gonna have a column for the view reservations header and also for the make reservation button. And for the width of my view reservations header, I actually want this to be star. So I want this to fill the entire remaining width, which is gonna result in our make reservation button being pushed all the way to the right. And this header is gonna be a text block and column zero. And the text is just gonna say view reservations. And the font size is gonna be 24, same thing as the make reservation view. So in fact, while we're here, we could move this into some kind of style, the header style. Of course, our header isn't very complex, but we do want it to be consistent between our pages. So in our app.xaml.cs, we can have another style and the target type is gonna be a text block. And this one is gonna have a key. And the reason we want a key is because we don't want this text block to be applied to all of our text blocks in the application. We only want it to be applied to our header. So we're gonna give it a key of header. And all this header is gonna do is set the font size to 24. And now we can use the style in our reservation listing view. So remove the font size and define a style instead, putting to our style, which we can reference with static resource, and the key of that is header. So we're gonna do the same thing in the reservation view, remove the font size and use the style instead for ultimate consistency. And then to the right of our view reservations header, we're gonna have a button, and the content for this will be make reservation, so that's the text that'll be displayed in the button, and this is grid column one, so to the right, and we'll throw some margin on here to the left, just so that we can guarantee that it'll never touch this text block. So that should be good for the header. Now we just need our list view, and for this, we are indeed gonna use a list view control. So this is gonna go in grid row one, Let's throw some margin to the top. I think we're gonna roll with 25. And there's multiple approaches to display data in list views. For example, we could define a list view item template, and then all the items in our list view, which would use this data template that we define as the item template. And then inside here, we just have a grid, and then we can just throw in whatever we wanted. So we could just have text blocks for our room ID, username, start date, and end date. But you may notice that in the wireframe, everything is aligned in kind of a grid formation. So item template, we could make it work. We could have some kind of grid format with strict rows and columns, but there's a much easier way to do this and that is using a grid view. So we can set the list view view to a grid view and then we can just have grid view columns for all of our data. So our first column is gonna be for the room ID. So we'll set that in the header room ID. And then this grid view column can bind to some kind of data on our list view items. And that is set with the display member binding property, but we can't really get into that yet because we do not have our view model set up. So for now, we can actually just hard code some data 
by setting the grid view column cell template to a data template. And inside here, we're going to have a text block and the text for this will just be some kind of hard coded room ID. We'll do something like 12 and then we're going to have three more columns. So we can just copy all of these. We're going to have a username column. So we'll hard code some data in there. Then we'll have a start date, hard code some more data and then a column for the end date with some more hard coded data. So let's actually run this and we shouldn't actually see anything in our list view because currently our list view has no data to display inside the grid view. But let's see how everything looks. So we at least do get the columns, so that's nice. And actually to get our data to appear, we can just throw in some list view items inside of our list view, and they don't actually have to have anything on them, but these list view items will be displayed in the grid view where we've hard coded all of this data. So it doesn't really matter what the list view items are, we're gonna see data in our grid view. And let's see this, and there we go, there's our data. So I actually want the room ID field to be centered. So what we can do is horizontal align center on the text block and that actually doesn't work. So the reason that doesn't work is beyond me, but we can set the list view item container style. And this is going to be a style targeting a list view item because those are the items inside the list view. And if we set the horizontal content alignment to stretch, then our horizontal alignment on this text block will actually work. And maybe we have to restart. Let's try that. There we go. There's the horizontal alignment and stays in place as we resize the column. And lastly, I want some padding at the end of each of these columns because they're all kind of pressed up together. So easy way to do that is set some padding on these text blocks. So we can just do maybe 20 to the right. And we'll go ahead and do that for all of our text blocks. So the start date and the end date. And it's really not perfect with the wireframe. The wireframe looks a lot better with the fluid background and no border and the bold headers. But maybe we'll go through at the end of the series and have some bonus content where we go through the entire UI and do some advanced styling. For example, these buttons could be better, but for now it's good enough. It'll eventually display the data that we want to show to the user. So we got both of our views. Let's see the make reservation view one more time. There we go. That looks nice. And actually, I think I called it username on the reservation listing view. So I should probably call this username as well for consistency. Let's change that. But we got our views. We had our models. Now we need our view models to bring it all together. And we will do that next time. But hopefully you can apply these UI concepts to build your own views in your MVVM applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you're enjoying the channel or enjoyed the video, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.